Uh, my name is Nancy Arelli, and I am with Community Living Advocates. And I wanted to start off today by um, just sharing a couple of things with you because we have a lot of things going on right now out in the senior care <clears throat> space. Um, let me see. If you'll just bear with me, I want to share my screen. Okay, here it is. Okay, so I wanted to remind everybody that the public hearing input for Onondaga County Office for Aging ends this Friday. So if you haven't taken the survey, you can take it from the events calendar on our website. Um, there are support groups and I also wanted to talk about the, what was the other thing? There's a senior fair and a bag event going on at Fayetteville, and there is a, what's the other thing? Oh yeah, the CMY Senior Talent Show. I hope you guys either have the flyers or possibly have hopefully helped distribute them. And we've been getting some videos in and they are so good. Um, Gwen can attest to that. They're just, they're so good. I just love it. So if, if you have any other interest in those or if you want any more information, please let me know, but we're really excited about it. And we're also um, Community Living Advocates is going to be starting doing a caregiving support group. It's going to be on Thursday starting in December. So let me just stop sharing that screen. I think someone else has come. Barbara, let's see who that is. Hi, Barbara. Hey, Barbara, can you tell us who you are and who you're with, please? Oh, we can't hear you. There you go. We can hear. Oh, there you go. Barbara Walter, I'm a retired attorney. Uh, and at this point, I'm just a community volunteer. Okay. Thank you for coming. All right, so today we are going to be talking all about senior care and senior housing communities. So we are going to start with um, subsidized senior apartments with Christopher Community and Zach. So Zach, if you want to go ahead and get started, that would be great. Great. Thanks, Nancy. You're welcome. Can you hear me okay? Can you hear me okay? Yes. Yeah? Okay, great. Uh, I'm Zach Klein. I'm the service coordinator here at Providence House Apartments, which is uh, 1700 West Onondaga Street. Um, we have 100 units here. Um, and we have service coordination at a lot of our buildings, but not all of them. Some of our, some of our larger units uh, require service coordination because of the need. Um, you know, particularly our building is one of the larger ones. And I'm going to talk a lot about our building because I don't know every single detail about all of our properties, but they're all very similar when it comes down to the federal rental assistance that's provided. Um, I'll kind of get in, just get that out of the way first, and then I can kind of, you know, once I get the, the numbers and stuff out of the way, I can just kind of talk freely about um, what we do. So, um, the, like I said earlier, federal rental assistance is provided. Uh, we have several several properties. If you go to ChristopherCommunity.org, it'll give you a list of all the properties all throughout you know Syracuse, and also we have properties in Canandaigua, Utica, and um, I'm probably going to leave out several other ones, but we're we're all over the place. Um, federal rental assistance is provided. The tenants pay no more than thirty percent of their monthly adjusted income for this particular housing. Um, for for a lot of people, it's an opportunity to live you know, when you're older, you can live less expensively, you know, you, you need a little bit more money for groceries, um, co-pays, millions of reasons. It just gives them an opportunity to, uh, to save a little bit of money and still live in a, in a neighborhood uh, where there's, um, there's bus access, there's, um, you know, obviously call a bus runs through. So we have um, a lot of assistance, a lot of providers nearby and also shopping and things like that. A lot, a lot of our buildings are like that. Um, let's see what we got here. Um, all the apartments in the building, they have, uh, they're, they're, they're updated, most of them. Um, they have kitchen, stove, refrigerator, bedroom, living, dining room combination and a full bath. 
Um, ours particularly here are all walk-in showers. You know, they're all handicap accessible. Um, and certainly at a lot of our properties, we can um, accommodate folks that need uh, small environmental modifications. Um, let's see what some of the, uh, the things that, that you need to know before applying is you can apply online to live uh, Christopher community uh, right on our website, Christopher-community.org, uh, where they'll list all of our properties. But um, because of the federal uh, rental assistance program, there, there's eligibility requirements, which I'm sure everybody's um, wondering. Now the age, for example, uh, you, you have to be at least 62 years of age or mobility impaired uh, regardless of age. Um, so you can be younger than 62 and be mobility impaired and still um, apply. Uh, we, uh, the maximum annual income eligi eligibility limits are uh, for one person is 44,550 and for two people it's 50,900. Um, there's a waiting list uh, for many of our properties. My property, uh, if you're 62 or older, we're looking at about a 10 month waiting period, but it goes pretty fast and, and, and things happen. Um, if you're, if you're, you know, under 62 and you have a mobility impairment, uh, there's about a, about a two year waiting list. So, um, the, the, the list is quite extensive. Um, let's see what we got here. The eligibility limits are set by the federal government and uh, they take into consideration when applying the, you know, your, your, your gross earnings, your pensions, your social security, uh, interest and dividends. Um, the management will sit down with you and, and sort of go over if, if somebody falls under that umbrella. Um, owning a property does not disqualify you um, from applying. So you can apply even if you still own a property and you're looking to, you know, transition from living in a home to uh, something, you know, that requires a little less work. Um, so I would encourage anybody to apply online or come check the building out and ask for an application. I mean, um, with social distancing, you can communicate with us through uh, a speaker and we can bring things out to you. And um, it's, it, they're really nice properties and it allows a lot of our residents uh, to age in place comfortably. Um, and, and for the buildings that do have service coordination, we can make the proper referrals where necessary. And uh, it is independent living. It's not a medical um, facility. So everybody's, you know, um, needs, needs to be met adherent independently. So, you know, they, they, they can certainly have um, all the services that they want, which is service coordination will assist with. And um, it's really up to them. Um, it, it allows seniors to keep their independence and, um, you know, stay as long as they need to. And that's, that's pretty much it. Um, that kind of covers everything. Okay. Does All anybody right. have any questions for Zach? So again, Zach is with Christopher Community. I am. I have a question, Zach. Yeah. yeah. I've actually tried to refer a few clients to you recently, but that waiting list. Yeah. Um, so my first question is, where do you refer folks at do need that handicap accessible apartment when you don't have any availability? Well, um, in house, you know, there's there's certain um, there's certain things that are that are you know our maintenance can provide our our superintendents. They're a, a reasonable accommodations, such as you know grab bars, things like that. The smaller things, some of the uh, larger, more extensive things, you know, we you may have to wait until a handicapped uh, like uh, we have certain apartments that are fully handicap accessible and some that just have the rolling shower. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, they, they don't come up too often. So there, there are places that are a little bit more um, accommodating for those people. I would suggest a place like Harbor Brook over by um, St. Camillus, that, that, that would probably be really, really um, better suited for somebody whose needs are greater. Okay. Yeah. And so if you want to make a referral, do they just fill out the application online first or like, what's the best way to go to find 
to figure out which, um, which of your communities is the best fit for them? Well, um, I guess geographic location, you know, plays a big role in that. I mean, if people want to be, you know, on a bus line or they have a particular place they want to live, we have so many locations. Um, and I, I would re highly recommend everybody going to our website, uh, you know, Christopher-Community.org and, and, and take a look at, at our buildings. You know, you, you get a visualization as to, you know, what they look like outside. And I think that there might be some pictures of inside, but, um, I always recommend people either going to the building and if they, and if they can't, then obviously apply online. Okay. So it's individual for each place. I don't know if it is, it is. And you can talk to that can help you figure out. Yeah. I would call once you find a location that you like, I would call, I would call and just inquire within. Okay. There's just so many of them. There are, you got to find the neighborhood that you like, you know? Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you. Very helpful. Oh, yeah. No, sure. Anybody else? I'm usually, I'm a service coordinator. I'm just actually, I don't usually talk about housing. So it was kind of a learning experience for me too. I had to put together a little something. So, but if, if I don't have any uh, answers for you, you can always contact me and I'll, I'll find an answer for you. Um, just give me an email. It's uh, zkline at Christopher dash community.org. It's, it's just like the website, but with my initial Z and then Klein. And I'd be happy to, uh, to get that information for you real fast. If you have any questions. Great. Thank you, Zach. I think you did great. Thank you, Nancy. You're welcome. Okay, next, let's go on to Amanda Vogue with Park Rose Estates. Hello, everyone. Um, thank you so much, Nancy, for asking me to be a part of this, because if you know me, you know how passionate I am about um, Park Rose and independent living. Um, I would start by saying it really, in my opinion, is a middle ground between a senior apartment, a private pay senior apartment, um, and an assisted living community. I think it's a good middle ground for those that maybe don't need full assisted, which you'll hear about um, but need a little bit of extra maintenance-free care. Um, so I am with Park Rose Estates and we are independent living. And I do believe that independent living is a hidden gem in senior living options. Not a lot of people know that it's out there. Um, a lot of people just hear the term assisted living or senior housing. They don't know about what independent living has to offer. So um, although every place is unique in what they offer and, and um, you know, the culture that they provide in the community. Independent living as a whole is maintenance-free living for all inclusive. Um, your rent rates include three meals a day. Um, well, at Park Rose, it's all three meals. You have weekly housekeeping that comes in. So you have your typical housekeeper every week that comes the same day, cleans your full apartment, and then strips your bed, washes the linens and towels, and redresses the bed for you. Um, you have a full calendar of social activities with things going on all day, whether it be movies in the theater, um, exercise classes, brain fitness, or crafts and baking. There's lots of different options for people's different interests throughout the day and throughout the month. Um, we provide medical transportation included in the rent as well. So as long as you schedule it with the front desk, we'll get you there and back. Um, we do have limitations on when the bus goes, but people know that moving in and then um, you book your appointments from there. Um, and then you are given a medical alert button to wear, which is also included in the rental rate. We have someone on the front desk 24 hours a day and that button, if it should be pressed, will alert the front desk. So it does not go, oh, excuse me, the sun will is just beaming right down on me. Um, if you press that button, it might be because you fell or you um, just were feeling faint, something was not normal for your you know, day to day feeling and that will alert a system at our front desk and the receptionist will go assess the situation, call 911, call the family um, and from there or really whoever hears the alarm going off. Um, but that's what it provides in your, in your monthly rate. Cable and phone at Park Rose are a separate cost that does differ depending on which independent living community you're at. Um, but in regards to the building itself, you have five different style apartments where I am, um, ranging from studios to large one bedrooms. And 
the resident or couple, whichever apartment they choose, is their own private space. So it's not a shared, it's not a shared room. It's not a suite with another resident. It is your space and your space alone. Um, they mostly are not furnished and you would bring your own furniture in, which really I believe helps make that your home. And it's like taking all of your special things that you feel um, make your home uh, what it is and you bring it into Park Rose and set up your apartment that way. Our maintenance department will hang up your pictures, they will hang your curtains, um, which relieves I think a lot of stress off of the prospective resident and the family because a move anywhere is stressful. So when you're uprooting somebody who might have been in a home for 50 plus years, um, with lots of items that need to be gone through, you know, it's, we try and make it as easy as we can for them to transition. Um, so with that said, you get your own space to live in, your own apartment, but at the end of the day, you can walk out your front door and you're a part of a big community with lots of people who have gone through similar things you've gone through in life, who've dealt with the heartbreak, um, who've dealt with the downsizing, and you have that companionship right at your fingertips. Um, so the community itself, most independent livings have different rooms like I'm about to share with you. Uh, Park Rose in particular has a theater where we play movies, where we'll put on SU games, um, and a big activity room with a kitchen, and that's where most of the social activities are held. And I've, I've never not wanted sun in my life, except for right now. I just have to say that. Um, so the activity rooms where most activities are held, and then our coffee cafe is another quiet space where residents can come and read the paper and maybe get a cup of coffee pre-COVID. Um, and there's a resident computer in there as well for their use. Uh, a salon on the third floor, so they really don't even have to leave the building to get their hair done, as well as a library and a, um, a little pantry, which is kind of like a general store where we have essentials, uh, most people come for the candy and the snacks, but it's there, you know, at their leisure. Um, for their meals, they are highly encouraged to come down to the dining room and eat with everyone else. Although we do understand sometimes that's not feasible for someone or, you know, maybe somebody just returned from the hospital and it's much easier for them to get the meal delivered. That is no problem. They call down for room service. Um, we've had one resident, I remember I answered the phone one day and she's like, ah, I'm having a lazy day. Can I get my breakfast sent up? So it's little luxuries like that, that completely take away the maintenance of living in your own home, dealing with um, the plow guy, dealing with um, this older home that might be breaking down, making yourself nutritious meals, you know, three times a day. It gets to the point, I think we all can agree. Sometimes you come home from work and you're like, I don't want to cook. So, you know, when you are at that point in life where everything, it takes a little bit more effort, um, why not give it up and be able to enjoy each day by having your meals provided and um, having maintenance taken care of if your toilet plugs will take care of it. So um, little things like fixing TVs, that is really why we're there. We're there to support these little um, inconveniences, I would say, in day-to-day -day life. Um, one of the major benefits to independent living is that you can hire care and you can hire help. And I think a lot, um, there's a big misconception when people hear, oh, you don't have medical personnel on, on staff, on, on site. Um, no, we don't, but if you need help with meds or you need help with showers or you need um, just assistance with getting maybe some documents in order and you don't have family around, you can absolutely bring in whoever you wish um, to come and help you with those things. And depending on the situation, sometimes they're ready for assisted living and they're really ready for that on site, like somebody's kind of overseeing and they can help them. But most of the time what we're realizing is that they don't need all of that. They need a little bit of help in the morning and a little bit of help at night to kind of get them through the day. And so it's a little more cost effective to have pay for this all-inclusive living and then add on what you need. Um, and I think that's such a huge benefit and I, I am more than happy to help families get that in place or reach out to you know professionals that are on this call and say, I have somebody who might benefit from what you offer. Um, so, 
my, I think my favorite thing about independent living and what I've seen just being in the community is really that camaraderie that these residents have with each other. I mean, outside of the apartments are little sitting areas. And I can't tell you the feeling you get when you turn a corner and there's four ladies gabbing away. And it's just such a beautiful gift for seniors to have when they've come from a home where they're extremely isolated, um, especially with what we've been dealing with, obviously with COVID. Um, that kind of slapped us all across the face and we had to you know, learn how to live with that and protect those most vulnerable. So um, seeing everybody have you know, that sense of friendship in each other is, is just absolutely amazing. And um, I'm fortunate to work in independent living. I will say that I'm very happy to represent Park Rose. And I hope I covered, you know, everything about independent living, but those of you that know about it can absolutely chime in or if anybody has any questions. Question. Um, what's your population by age? What's the typical tenure? What are your costs? What, did, what are your, you know, tenant costs? That's a great question. So um, our average age is around high 80s. Um, we have somebody that's 103 and we have someone that's, you know, mid 70s. So it does really, it, it kind of varies, but our average age would be high 80s. Um, your question was cost. So we have, we have five different style apartments and we range from small studios to large one bedrooms. The small studios are $2,935 a month. And that includes everything discussed except for their phone and cable account. And our largest one bedroom is $3,765 a month. Oh, and that actually brings up a good point. So in the apartments, um, no matter if it's a studi studio or a one bedroom, you do have a kitchen area with a stove and oven combination and a fridge and freezer with some cabinetry. And you also have a large walk-in bathroom with a walk-in shower that's barred all around. And I think another one of our questions was uh, the tenure, how long people are there? Thank you. Um, that's a great question. I, I think it really does depend. I mean, we have had residents that have been there for 10 plus years. Um, but I would say, I would say anywhere from like three to seven. And it just depends. Some end up with extra care. Um, others, you know, unfortunately might have a situation that they land in the hospital and then from there um, it's safer for them to be in like a skilled nurse, nursing community. They, our residents can have up to 24 hour care. So if they financially can um, pay the all-inclusive rate and then also add in a caregiver or, you know, what they need for 24 hour care, um, they can stay. It's, that's totally up to them, but it does definitely become an issue of finances when they require the care of skilled nursing. Amanda, it's Becky. Just a quick question about your screening process. Um, tell me about what you do when you're identifying a new potential uh, resident. Um, that's a great question. So, you know, definitely it helps if there are adult children involved who have really seen um, how the resident is at home or how they've been declining at home. Um, it is a little bit more difficult when you meet somebody who might be inquiring on their own and you don't know their day to day. So we, I mean, a big one for, for us that a big one that we ask is, you know, can you get to and from the bathroom by yourself? If it's an issue of mobility, like they clearly are struggling, can you get to and from the bathroom by yourself? Can you get up and into your bed? Can you get out of the chair? And will you be able to come down to the dining room? Um, memory, you know, if it's, if it's very apparent in the first meeting, then we definitely would, would just say that this, this community um, probably isn't the right fit for you. Um, but we do have, you know, people with memory issues that are maybe living with their spouse still and the spouse is still looking after them. Um, so there's, you know, situations where I may say if she was alone, I, I definitely wouldn't recommend this being her home um, because it is independent. They can come and go as they please. You know, we don't lock the doors for them not to get out. We lock the doors at night for people not to get in. So um, we do understand, you know, if it is a couple 
we're very clear about the responsibility that the spouse may have in this transition. I hope that kind of answered your question. Okay. Um, thank you very much, Amanda. I think you did a great job. Thank you. I talk a million miles a minute, so I apologize for that. No, that's <laughs> fine. You did great. Thanks. <clears throat> so I wanted to let everybody know that we have um, four more speakers. So if you have questions, if you could just write them down to the end, just so we can make sure we hear from everybody, that would be great. Okay. So next up, we're going to have Ruth Latimer. And she is with Brookdale Eastside. Okay, here I am. I had to unmute myself. You know, me not talking and being on mute. I mean, that's just, that's not who I am. So my name's Ruth Latimer. I am the sales manager at Brookdale Eastside. And we are an assisted living. And everything that Amanda said, we all totally understand. You know, people, the majority of people that move into assisted living have already been in an independent living community and were the next step or coming from rehab where they truly are unable to return home because they've been holding on by a thread. And with that said, you know, there's, we also have Enhance with Cherry, but what we offer is 24 hour care seven days a week. We have three nurses on staff and they're, they're um, staggered. In fact, we have a full nursing staff now and what a difference it has made with a new health and wellness director who's devoted and committed the way I'm devoted and committed because I just want the same for our residents that I give our residents on a daily basis. So I really see things, you know, going well, especially, you know, in these sad times. But as far as someone coming from independent living and what I saw when I worked in independent living for years was once it came to that 24 hour care, unless they have just saved and are so comfortable, even somebody that it's as simple as, you know, a toileting schedule. Well, it's so hard to pay an aid to make sure she's there for a toileting schedule. And that was where we saw, you know, people go to the next level because we are able to put them on a toileting schedule and provide um, incontinence care. And, you know, we are definitely an eclectic population. We have residents that have memory issues, but they are able to get from point A to point B and are not a wander risk. And just for that extra coverage, our doors do have alarms on them. So anyone exiting, but that's not, I mean, I don't believe not everyone with memory issues needs to be in a locked secured unit but then there's definitely people that do and that's through our assessment and doing you know the evaluation and doing testing for dementia and talking to family and making sure that it's a safe environment because we want to set that resident up for success and the family but you know not for failure so we're all inclusive um, I'll talk quick on rates when this building was first built we were all studios and they're smaller studios then they decided to do cut throughs with these studios and they took out one of the bathrooms and put in a kitchenette. Then we had these God awful rooms that had two bathrooms. So two rooms really meant almost like a suite for a couple. Well, we don't get any couples. Um, if they have money, they're going to Manlius. There's no doubt about it. So here we are with these lousy rooms as far as I'm concerned. So we decided to go with the shared room. We put in a door. One of them has a sliding door. The other one has an actual door and reduced the price to 3,100. So even though it's the exact same size as a studio, they have a partition in between. Um, so 3,100 where our normal rate for a studio is 4,195. And it is all inclusive. So it includes all of the care um, necessary along with, you know, all of the amenities, because to me, and we have a wonderful activities director, um, and socialization is the key. You know, nobody wants, nobody's like knocking at our door. Yeah, I can't wait to come in. You know, it's a decision that's made for them because they have no other choice. So that's, that's basically it. Kept it short. Um, just because I feel like we have a few minutes, can you describe to me what kind of care you can actually provide there? Yeah, we can. Um, medication management. 
assistance with showering, assistance with dressing. You know, we can, you know, do some of the diets, um, whether they're um, ground or mechanical, we can do that. We also um, provide, you know, that oversight at, overnight. So they have um, next to their bed, they have a pull cord in their bathroom, they have a pull cord. But if you fall in between, it, it's no use. So they did upgrade to um, a personal one so that the resident can hit that button and, you know, immediately um, we respond. And we can also, you know, we schedule all the doctor's appointments. We coordinate doctor's appointments. Right now, our transportation isn't running, but when we do have an emergency, we have taken our residents, you know, with transportation. Um, the families are still, you know, providing the transportation until we can open it up. And basically, I don't know how many people you'd fit on the bus. Maybe you could get two or three with the, um, yeah, probably just two with the um, social distancing in mind. But, um, you know, the biggest thing, you know, a lot of people are incontinent and, you know, keeping them clean, keeping them, you know, well showered. Um, and having a nursing staff that's on top of everything. And, you know, this is the first time in almost two years that I feel good. good. And that's a lot, that means a lot for me. I, it has to. Absolutely. Thank you, Ruth. Thanks. Okay, up next we have Terry Stone Cipher. She's with Brookdale Manlius. Hi, Terry. everybody. Uh, Brookdale Manlius is an enhanced assisted living. So we have uh, studios, alcoves, one bedroom, two bedrooms. We can take um, couples at different levels. With our enhanced license, we are able to do um, more hands-on care. So we can take people that might have a, a catheter or an ostomy, uh, might be a diabetic and need um, insulin coverage. Uh, we can take people that um, use a slide board or a sit to stand or a um, two person Hoyer lift. I always tell people that our niche in the community is people that are mentally pretty good, but physically need care. And nursing homes are always the next step. We can take a couple uh, where one of them needs a lot of care and the other one could be independent. What comes with the apartments are all of the um, meals housekeeping, laundry, medical transportation. We are currently upgrading our call bell system. Uh, the residents have always worn either a pendant or a bracelet. Anywhere on our property, they could press that and it would tell our staff who they are, where they are, and that they needed help. But we are upgrading that. And uh, this new um, bracelet or pendant will also tell us if they fell. So if somebody falls and is unable to press their pendant, then uh, the, it will alert us that they have fallen, which is going to be a really nice uh, advantage to our community. Uh, it really is more of a homey setting, the apartments. Uh, they have little kitchenettes. Uh, we are upgrading the kitchenettes to um, taking out the little two burner stove and putting in a microwave as long as they're safe with it. They can also have a Keurig in their apartments. Our, uh, um, they're upgrading the closets or the cupboards and all of that. Uh, it is a step into shower, but we also have a wheeled in shower for people that are you know, using a Hoyer lift or a sit to stand or is unable to, with assistance, get into the shower. Our age group is, um, our youngest, I think, uh, is like 62, and our oldest is 101. We have people that are totally independent that still drive a car, and we have people that, uh, you know, are incontinent that have special diets that are on oxygen and using a Hoyer lift. Um, the five things that people need to be able to do to be in our community is one, they need to be able to press a pendant. They need to be able to let us know what they need. And we can cue them. Do you need to go to the bathroom? Are you hungry? Do you need, you know, go outside, whatever. Um, and 
they need to follow a care plan and they, usually that's the hardest. So if somebody needs help to go to the bathroom, they're gonna press their pendant and let us come in and help them. They cannot be a wander risk. Although our doors do get locked in the evening, it's to keep people from coming into our community, not to keep people in our community to go out. And they must be able to physically feed themselves. We do have people that have some memory issues. Um, they've been in our community and they've kind of aged in place and this is home. They don't try to leave. They may uh, be looking for their apartment on the second floor when they actually live on the first floor, but they usually are in the same hallway and usually in the same location. So uh, this is home and they're uh, very comfortable here. What's uh, real special is uh, that we can take couples. When you've got a husband and a wife and one of them's a caregiver and the other one is just getting too tiring for them, um, it's nice to know that there's a place where they can both be in the same apartment and one of them receive care and the other one be as independent. Our little niche in the community. So. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. In the interest of time, we're going to move on to Lynn Blair. She's with um, Elderwood in Liverpool. Hi, everybody. Um, at Elderwood, we get a lot of questions about the difference between, you know, skilled nursing care and assisted living environments. And of course, one of the biggest differences between these two care options is the amount of medical care that's provided to our residents. Um, at Elderwood, across New York State, we have both skilled nursing, independent living, assisted living, yet here in the Syracuse area, um, Elderwood at Liverpool is, has two parts to its campus, and that is subacute and rehab, and also long-term care. So skilled nursing would be most appropriate following a hospitalization or a decline in health that requires 24-7 nursing assistance covering all ADLs, you know, activities of daily living. Typically, residents present with acute and complex healthcare conditions that require ongoing nursing care and therapy. Um, to that end, skilled care provides, uh, again, 24-hour nursing care and medical supervision. And these professional teams administer a high quality of care to maintain residents' health and wellness. Um, in terms of our care staff in a skilled nursing level, um, we have a building medical director. For us, it's Dr. Joe Pincus. A lot of people know him from CNY Internist. He used to be there. He's a great gentleman. We have a director of nursing and a full complement of BSNs, LPNs, and CNA, CNAs. And the ratio of staff to resident is also very much optimized. Um, comprehensive skilled nursing therapy suites offer services such as physical, speech, and occupational therapy services, as well as pulmonary and respiratory therapy. Now, in, at Liverpool, we don't have uh, pulmonary and respiratory therapy. Uh, we usually um, entail that out. It is a more intensive option to help someone regain mobility or recovery after a significant health event. You know, whether it be CHF or CVA, um, could be hip or knee replacement, but we're not seeing a lot of those anymore. Um, could be stroke recovery as well. Um, it also offers uh, a community setting to be with others who share similar phases of life. Um, and then in skilled nursing, multidisciplinary teams comprised of our medical team that I just shared, the therapy team and our social services team come together to consult with family members for shared decision-making. We're very, um, not only us, but you know, every skilled nursing facility has a, a great deal of transparency with um, the POAs and extended family members. So they feel like they're part of that process. It's really important. Um, in terms of payer sources, um, skilled nursing services can be paid through most insurance providers or subacute and rehab. But for long-term care, um, private pay and Medicaid uh, are those sources that would cover care. And we take both private pay and Medicaid. People can frequently come to us when they've done a, a significant spend down 
at a lesser level of care and uh, we do have Medicaid appropriate beds, which are exactly the same as our private pay beds as well. Um, I will say just uh, about Liverpool itself, Elderwood at Liverpool's uh, multidisciplinary team really takes a holistic approach at uh, looking at potential residents coming in. I mean, we don't just take people as a continuum of care from subacute and learning that they're not, um, you know, going to be successful back home. Um, you know, a lot of people go directly to our long-term care unit from uh, subacute and rehab, and yet um, many people go home or go to assisted livings. You know, obviously they have to score um, in a certain manner in order to be considered for long-term care. Um, but you know, we also have uh, clergy on staff. I don't know that. Um, every skilled nursing facility has that, but we have our own Pastor Penny, um, who covers all Pro Protestant services. She also speaks with, with our Catholic um, residents as well, but we have a partnership with uh, St. Joseph the Worker. Uh, used to be Father Fritzen coming in, now we have a deacon coming in. Um, that is limited, of course, uh, with COVID. Um, and then just speaking about COVID right now, um, you know, with the changes that have just recently happened. Uh, we don't have visitors at all in the facility at this point. And that may seem like, you know, wow, I really want to see my loved one. Um, we do have certain circumstances where if it's end of life, um, this is, it's a DOH regulation. Uh, family, of course, can come in as long as they're having the, the N95 mask and you know, just going to that loved one's room. Um, these are really just really troubling times that we were living are living in right now. So uh, we're doing our best to keep everyone safe. That's really the most important thing right now. Our activities team is providing um, house party, Facebook, FaceTiming and, and whatnot. So uh, everyone can feel connected to their loved one and they can even email their loved ones specifically at um, this local Liverpool uh, facility, as well as any of our other 15 subacute rehabs in New York State. So um, thanks for letting me present, and um, I really appreciate your time. Okay, very good. Thank you, Lynn. Okay, last but absolutely not least is Kim Staker. I know she's been having some trouble getting on, but I believe she came on over the phone. Hello. Is that you? Can you hear me? Yes, is this Kim? Yes, it is. Okay, go ahead, Kim. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you for having me. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm sorry I can't join you visually. I was having some technical difficulties. Um, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Kim Stager. I am the new Director of Sales and Marketing for the Loretto Housing Division. Um, I'm going to provide a brief overview of Loretto's continuum of care and transitioning throughout our system. I'm sure that many, many of you are aware that Loretto has many different layers of services. Uh, we, we serve close to um, 10,000 individuals each year. Whether they need independent living, skilled nursing, short-term rehab, memory care, as well as um, in-home care, they'll be able to age in place right within our system. To give an example, let's say an individual needs assisted living, moves into one of our five housing sites. If and when there is a change in condition or a medical situation that might arise that would we require some short-term rehab, we could transition that resident to our Fahey Rehab or the Commons in Auburn for their recovery. The transition will be spearheaded by both the facility care managers and the facility social workers, um, which is a, a very easy communication line. Um, many of our current residents have transitioned from short-term rehab to our housing sites. The admissions department will assist any rehab outside of our system and within our system and the families throughout this process. Another example could be that a resident needs memory care and lives in one of our um, assisted living facilities. Um, they could transition right to the Heritage Memory Life community to better assist that resident or if they need a um, secure setting for any wandering behaviors that develop. Again, the Loretto teams will help that transition. So the resident gets to the appropriate living situation and 
takes the uh, takes the burden off the families to get them somewhere safe. A little bit about what makes us unique is that most of our assisted living and skilled nursing homes accept Medicaid for partial or full payments. Our, our four assisted living facilities, the Heritage, Buckley Landing, Sedgwick Heights, and the Bernadine all accept Medicaid for the assisted living level of care. Also staying within the Loretto continuum kind of takes the stress off the financial application process or any other kind of clinical barriers for other facilities. Um, if you have any kind of additional questions or site specific questions, you can always reach out directly to me or, you know, if it's, if it's information about our PACE program, which is more of our managed program, you can reach out to me. I can guide you to the correct person to communicate with or for the ones that are familiar with our different housing sites, you can reach out to, directly to the site. Thank you for having me today. Thank you for coming. Um, I showed your website a little bit while you were talking, so hopefully people can find you through there. But if you could just tell us again your name and your title and maybe your email address, that would be great. Sure, so my name is Kim Steger. Um, I'm new to this role. I've been in this role for about three months now. However, I've been with Loretto for 11 years. I started with Loretto as the admissions representative at Sedgwick Heights and I worked there for five years. Uh, took a little bit of a, a, a change in my career path and I was the administrator at Buckley Landing for six years. And then uh, just recently joining this director of the marketing position, going back to kind of my roots um, where I started with Loretto. So um, I have a lot of knowledge on the admission side and I have a lot of knowledge on the regulatory side. Um, I can be reached. My email address is K, my last name, Stager, S-T-A-I-G-E-R at Loretto, L-O-R-E-T-T-O org, O-R-G dot. I'm sorry, I Loretto System, I stand corrected, L-O-R-E-T-T-O-S-Y-S-T-E-M dot org. And my phone number, my direct phone number is 315-413-3100. And again, and again, for any kind of division of Loretto that you have questions about, please feel free to call me. I can direct you to the right person. Okay, that's awesome. Thank you. Now, does that was our last speaker. Does anyone have any questions for anybody? Because we have plenty of time. Tell us one out. Um, are any of you aware of any attempts in, in our area to create other housing alternatives um, co-housing or shared apartment or you know, shared housing matching uh, homeowners or apartment owners with roommates or any other kinds of community um, based options for folks who are um, you know primarily from I'm thinking independent but don't want to move into a big independent uh, apartment complex. Any takers? I am not familiar with any. I I don't know if you've heard of, except for, um, this might be what you're thinking. It might not be. Have you heard of Springmore in the village of Liverpool? What is it? Sorry, what was it called? Springmore? No. So it's just a community of townhomes. So you do buy the townhome. Is this what you're, um, but it's, they have a community center and they have a pool and Ruth, you might be able to kind of chime in on this, but they, it, it is a, it's, I think you pay an HOA. It's like they take care of your lawn and stuff, but it's seniors. Yes. Same with park, not park. Um, what is, uh, McCary Life. 
Is that sort of what you're, because then you get your own home, you get your own town home, but there is, there are like dinner, I mean, pre-COVID. I know we had hosted a dinner there like last summer. We brought it to their community room and people came. Um, and you do buy the house. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's, but Amanda, I think the McCary life, our town, McCary town is connected with the McCary system. So there's yes. a long wait list right now for McCary town. Yes. Many years actually, but you're right. Those are independent uh, homes that start you in that CCR. See, so that you can be on your way in their system. Yeah, uh, Springmore is different. But I than, think um, McCary Life for sure. McCary Life, yeah. What, what were those called again? Springmore and McCary Life? Yes, yeah, Springmore. Um, I think it's just Springmore Community. It's it's located behind the fire station on Vine um, uh, Oswego Street. It's off of us. We go between us. We go in nine. Us we go in Tulip. It's really a hidden gem in Liverpool. I mean, it's um, you know, affordable housing as far as you know, a retired senior, and it has a sense of community with a pool and a community room. Um, and you're just, it's a joined um, ranch style. So you're just, you know, you have one neighbor. So it's um, two per. Uh, unit and um, I mean a few years ago they were going for like 160 to 170 um, the only downside is they're located in the village of Liverpool so you're paying village taxes on top of regular property taxes but it is very nice very nice That's yeah, awesome. on that also the last uh, checking and having to deal with someone that was interested, there's been a, a usually a very long waiting list unless one unit just happens to come up for sale and then a realtor would have it. That's right, because it isn't a waiting list. It's people that want to get in there and just right. and jumping on it as soon as it's available and being the yeah. first one to put in an offer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I know, Barbara, you're probably looking. There is a real need for more housing in central New York. It's slim pickings. Everything's private pay. Thank God mm -hmm. for Loretto because, you know, people can't afford. I mean, that's, it's out of their budget range. You know, most people are living very comfortably at home on their $2,000 a month, if even that, with Social Security paying their bills or houses, um, paid for but go for any type of care or additional services and they're just out of luck mm -hmm. maybe that'll change with this administration i said i wasn't going to get political but now i am <laughs> i'm thinking otherwise if I, i'm not familiar with springmore but from what you're saying um how come none of you are working on developing more alternatives like this I well i've talked to my company about it's definitely always on the forefront of my mind, Barbara. Smaller, smaller communities for those with um, early onset dementia, um, maybe pairing up roommate type situations for solo seniors. So I'm thinking about it. If you want to chat, let's brainstorm. I would yeah. love to. Hopefully I've got a ways before I'm looking for myself, but I would like to be involved in developing uh, mm -hmm. communities That's like a great this. Great idea. Yeah. I'd like to see more Northern. Medicaid beds. Absolutely. <laughs> I want to turn Great Northern into a senior like town. Shopping town. I think oh. town. We always talk about that over here. Yeah, that would be so That's cool. A waste of space. Mm -hmm. With you. And anybody who's interested in pursuing the matter, I'm uh, looking <laughs> for ways to make it happen. Barbara, what's your email address? B as in Barbara, T as in Tom, Walzer as it's on the screen, W-A-L-Z-E-R at yahoo.com. Okay, thanks. Please contact me. I'll put it in the chat also. That'd be great. Hi, this is Kim Steger. I saw that there was a question regarding ELP admissions during COVID at our housing sites? And the answer to that question is yes, we are all accepting admissions at this time. 
We do have openings at most of our sites, except we do have a, a short wait list at our Heritage Dementia Facility. Um, residents that are coming in do have to go through a COVID testing process. Um, to be specific in detail with that, that would be a, COVID, a test with negative results within seven days. And then they would have to quarantine for, the, for, for up to 14 days. We will provide a second COVID test five days after admission. You can reach out to me if, there's, um, if you have anybody interested in one of our sites. Hey Kim, it's Melissa. Yeah. You think Hi I there. Yeah. you think I wouldn't have any more questions for you, but <laughs> I always do. Uh, first one is at the Heritage. Do you still need to generally come in private pay for a bit to get in? Uh, yes, for the most part. But there is times when you know it's it's kind of a timing thing where we do have a Medicaid spot open up. So don't ever hesitate to reach out even if it's a Medicaid admission. Sure, yeah, I always tell people at least get on the wait list. Um, yes. And then, oh, sorry. Yes. That's okay, one other question. Then do you still have one screener screen for all of the assisted living sites? Like the we family? have, sorry, go ahead, Melissa. I was just gonna ask, because somebody has to help because, you know, one place is it the same screener? So they would recommend if it's a different level of care they need? Absolutely, yes. Um, we have one screener, and then, of course, we utilize sometimes our site um, nurses or case managers. I screen myself as well. Um, yes, and we'll recommend the appropriate site if we're screening for, let's say we're screening for Buckley Landing, and we recommend maybe the Heritage, we will internally refer that. Does that answer your question? It does. Thank you, Kim. You're welcome. Uh, Kim, it's Ruth Latimer from Brookdale Eastside. Hi. How you doing? Doing well. Good. Question for you. I referred someone to Buckley just recently, real quick. Um, three years of private pay, they were told. They called me back. Is that true? That is not true. They can come in Medicaid, pending Medicaid, of course. It's three years of private pay to be in a private room. So it's just based on the oh. room style. Okay, yeah. because she has two years, but um, I oh yeah, so private room. Okay, that's probably. I, I, I know which one you're talking about too. No, she's not disqualified from the program. It's just a private room versus a, a shared uh, room. Yep, I gotcha. Okay, I understand now. That didn't because, make sense to me. Yeah. A lot of people don't understand that we have um, two different room styles and there's two different mm -hmm. rates um, and not everybody can afford the private um, room rate at particular sites. Um, we do have specific sites that have the SSI rate that are all individual apartments, which would be the Bernadine. Right. Um, Sedgwick also has private rooms that are cheaper than Buckley Landing. Um, but of course, again, people prefer location um that's true you know lo location specific site so but no she is eligible for the program just it would just based on which room yeah okay great thank you you're welcome about housing. This is my favorite meeting. <laughs> That's great. Does anybody else have any more questions or anything you'd like us to cover next time that we didn't cover this time? No? Does anybody have any announcements they want to share before we leave? I, um, we just decided to do something fun and new at Park Rose next month. Um, so we just tossed around this idea yesterday, but if there's anybody on here, who, you know, from a business where their business would like to make a, gin a gingerbread house and we're going to have them displayed in the front vestibule of our building, 
and people are gonna be able to vote on their favorite gingerbread house. We're not going to display you know, which company it's from um, because we don't want people to be biased on their judgment. But we just, uh, we, thought, we just thought of this yesterday just to make something fun for the residents and something fun um, for anybody that's coming into the building. So definitely email me if you're at all interested in, in making a gingerbread house and putting it on display at Park Rose in the month of December. Thank you, that sounds fun. Fun. I know. I hope I don't eat them. <laughs> I just, I just wanted to tell people that uh, Brookdale Manly is offering uh, CE classes uh, once a month. If anybody's interested, um, I just got the uh, courses for next uh, year, and they're pretty interesting. If anybody's interested, uh, either give me a call or email me, and I can uh, send you the list. Okay. I thought I saw another hand up. Gwen, what do you have going on? Um, tomorrow morning, 830, I have a cup of comfort where anybody can come. It is a, a brainstorming hour of sitting back, having a, your favorite hot or cold, and just expressing whatever comes across your mind. So if you would like to join, just send me a text or give me an email. Great. And the talent show. Um, did you have something, Allison? Yeah, sorry. Uh, like Amanda, the sun decided to pop out just at this moment. Um, so sorry I wasn't on earlier, but um, first of all, thank you to all the speakers. It was uh, really great, really informative too. And uh, we're definitely always looking for places for our clients uh, when they do need that higher level of care. Um, but I did want to say that Touching Hearts actually is in the process of uh, looking for people who might be interested in doing a, um, an HR role within our company. So if anyone knows of anyone who might have um, some HR experience as well as experience in recruiting, uh, training, and working with caregivers, that is kind of what we're looking for. So feel free to reach out to either Justin or myself if you have any other questions or know anyone to send our way. Thanks. I'm wondering who is our visitor? Does anybody know who this is? Oh well. Anyone else? You guys are getting sunshine. It just started blizzarding. <laughs> yeah, here too. The blizzard just left me. So that's why. Play Molly. Well, I wanted to invite all of you guys to the Coffee Net this Thursday, and we'll do this meeting again next month, and hopefully you can join us. If you have anything between now and then that you want to share with the group, please email it to me, and I will help send out the flyer. But if there's nothing else, I guess we're going to end it for the day. Bye-bye, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. 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 Thank you.